drink. That's fine, though. I'm not drinking anyway, so. No drink for after the movies? No drink, man. I don't have anything. All I have is water. It's fucked up. You know, I bet it gets hot in them Texan deserts. Might need some water. As I'm trying to flee a country that's on fire and flee to Mexico, the story that everybody knows oh so well of leaving America to, to find the Mexican dream. Which is part of what I... I'm going to be honest, I like that part of this movie. I think it's yeah. very funny. It's one of my favorite parts. Uh, no, I was like, it's cool as hell. I shouldn't say funny, but it's yeah, it's a great flip on a on a story. Um, so I guess we're rolling, right? Yep. I presume. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to After the Movies, the show that is kind of like At the Movies, but... Uh, not really after it's, it it's after it but it's after yeah mm -hmm. exactly we see uh, some new movies if we can and uh so we were talking about a film that i wanted to see that nobody else i don't think in the world wanted to see i'm sure people wanted to see it nobody i know wanted to go see this movie with me um they're objectively probably the dumbest movies that i think are actually quite good uh and that is the forever purge the final film, supposedly, of the Purge franchise. Um, and what d d despite not seeing any of them, Jimmy here was kind enough to accompany me to the movie theater. Yep. Uh, and, <clears throat> and go see it. And, um, well, we should talk about what we're drinking or not drinking, in your case. Yeah. Uh, I've got this Coca-Cola coffee. And you and I were just talking about this. I I initially thought you wouldn't like it, but the more we talked about it, I think you could. I think you could dig it. Yeah, that seems low sugar, uh, not too sweet. It's right up my alley. The vanilla bodes well for both the Coca Cola aspect and the coffee element. Um, I'd recommend. I think I had the dark roast blend as well, and thought that was pretty good, even less sweet. Nice. Um, the caramel, I have not had, and it, that one seems a little weirder to me. But I should. I should try it. Um, anyways. Anyways. We went to go see the Forever Purge, and my first question for you is that you went to go see, you infamously went to go see F9. I'm tired of getting called out for that every time. I'm tired of getting doxxed. I'm not calling you out. I'm not. You're doxing me every all. single podcast. You're like you went and saw F9. It's well, it's true. Did you or did you or did you not go see F9? I can neither confirm nor deny that I went and saw F9. <laughs> Answer the question. It's a yes or no question. You remember you took an oath before hitting record on this podcast. All as I can say is we're all family. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I do rest my case. Our our, our uh, defendant has, in fact, seen F9. Dom Toretto, uh, like, walks in. He's like, family. <laughs> uh, family. Um, but you saw it w without having seen all of the franchise. Uh, like you'd seen some, but not all. Mm -hmm. And this is similar, except you hadn't seen any of them. And I had a feeling that it wasn't going to be connected because usually the movies are, don't really have recurring characters. Um, and I was right. So did you have any issues following anything or was it pretty straightforward? This is starting to become Straight. a trend on after, um, after uh, the movies where J Jimmy doesn't watch all of the movies in a franchise, but still goes and watch the newest one. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna keep i i think we were just talking about uh i you know what i don't want to spoil it for people but we're taking we're talking about taking a little trip down nostalgia lane with one of my favorite franchises potentially for uh, an upcoming special and i think that might be a fun way to expose you to some <laughs> some part eights or some some part seven yeah of, of uh you know things anyways yeah man you were you were right i mean so a little bit about me i think everybody at this point if you've been watching these for a while you know i absolutely love going to other movies good bad ugly i do not care put me in that seat with that bag of popcorn and whoo i am ready so yeah i didn't see any of these before uh always a movie i wanted to see but kind of never um really had the time you know, because if you were going yeah. to the movies like back then with like working as much as I did, it was like you were going for the movie that you really wanted to see. Uh, so going and watching these and it just never happened. Nothing against them or anything. But, man, I was pleasantly surprised uh, with this film and I was happy that we went and saw it. So glad to hear you say that, because I also enjoyed the film. Uh, 
it's funny that you said the good, the bad, and the ugly because this this one has some Western elements components to it. That's why I said um, it. You did say something controversial. We were at, we were at the theater though. Oh, but I do have to address this. That's on the podcast that's so that's so unlike me to say anything controversial. It's it's I'm gonna be honest. It's kept me awake at night, and I need our I need our listeners and viewers to chime in. Uh, you said so. We got in. Mm-hmm. We saw the film at like two in the afternoon. The price was six dollars for a ticket. Very good price. Uh, the the even the concessions were they are no longer doing combos right now. So the concessions are cheaper. And all in all, I think we both got maybe like a medium popcorn, medium drink, and a movie ticket, and it came out to less than 20 bucks. Yeah. Very good pricing. Uh, you did say, though, that you, you, I don't know if you said you don't like seeing movies at night, but you said something about like how you prefer, because of the pricing, the matinee daytime uh, movie thing remember this you recall yeah, this no during no the no and i i i freaking stand uh, so the correct wording is it's not that i said i don't like watching movies at night i said i prefer watching them during the day unless it's like a like a big movie that you've been like waiting to go see or something then you get those night vibes but if you're going to watch a movie kind of the way we were you get to go out in the afternoon where you're not doing shit anyways. You're not doing a damn right. thing on a, like a Sunday afternoon. Don't even lie. Don't even pretend you're not doing anything. You go out, you watch a movie, and then you go out to dinner, and then maybe you go out for drinks afterwards, and now your whole day is filled, and instead of doing that backwards, you saved yourself 50 bucks. Unless you spend that $50 at the Texas Roadhouse after the movie, which is exactly what I did after we saw the forever purge uh <laughs> we big texas day for you and i big texas um, day yeah so here's what i'll say uh, just before intro to the purge movies i like these movies i do think that the concept is very dumb uh, i think there's a lot of people like it's almost that thing that you're embarrassed to like because it seems so boiled down to it's like uh, the plot is that uh, uh, all it's like it's like an eighth like an eight year old was just like, uh, what if uh, what if all crime was uh, legal and you could do whatever you wanted for a day, and you could like hurt uh, people and stuff, and then the next day like uh, it was illegal again and they couldn't arrest you for it. And it's even funny because the way that they announce the purge in the movies, they say, all crime for the next twelve hours, all crime. Including murder. Murder. Everybody knows the felony charge of murder. <laughs> Ve- vehicular man murder. So much murder. I'm so upset right now. I'm glad ah! I edit these. I'm glad I edit these, not you. Uh, me too. I get to edit out all of my mistakes and leave all yours in. It's going to be great short for the channel. It's well, already folks are gonna eat it. little piggies at home are gonna eat it up. Oink oink oink. It's already up. Aaron messed up again. Oink oink oink. Uh no, it's the dialogue is is very it's very, the writing is very funny because the it says for the next twelve hours, all crime, including murder, is legal. Which is like a very dumb thing for like an official government announcement to say, like, including murder. So in case you were thinking about not murdering somebody, you can. Um, and there, and so there's three stages of Purge movies. First one, first two are solid action horror movies where it's like a pretty standard, you know, a combination of thriller. There's somebody trying to get into my house or in the case of the second one, they're out on the streets and it's just kind of this combination of like, you're running away from someone or, you know, whatever you're out on purge night. You're trying to keep your family safe. It's straight, straight ahead. The third one stands out uh, as its own thing. It's called uh, election year. And it is like way over the top. Like they figured out that the movies they were making were okay. And then they also realized these movies are like kind of dumb. Right. And they like made them very like funny and self-aware. So the third one is like way over the top and very enjoyable. I like all these movies. And then the third phase of the Purge films would encompass the last one and this one. Uh, The last one being the first Purge. It was like a prequel thing. And these are ones that try to tackle 
semi-seriously try to tackle like topical political stuff. So yep. the first Purge was like straight up, not the first Purge film, but the movie, the first Purge was like, and it is kind of sweet. I mean, because it is, you see like the people purge. So obviously it's like the Purge is affecting these lower class communities a lot of people of color and stuff and you see like nazis and kkk people masked up which is like not the dope thing the dope thing is that you get to see these people get just absolutely like you know destroyed by they think they come in there rolling around on their you know golf carts with ak's and they're in clan robes and they just get their shit rocked which is great um so that that movie's just fun to watch from like a pure like fuck you standpoint but this one involves uh it's very funny because there's no way they could have written this in after it happened. Uh, but a, a, mili a militia group of like insurgents uh, who <laughs> want to overthrow the government. There's no way this was written before January 6th. Like that had to be part of the story, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but wait, they essentially. Wait, are you saying that they put this in here because of what happened on January 6th? No, oh, I'm saying it was written before. Oh, yeah, happened. yeah, yeah. I was like, there's no way. Definitely. Yeah, there's, there's no, no way. way. Oh, okay. And, and which is which makes it kind of more endearing, you know. Uh they essentially this group refuses to acknowledge the purge. Uh like and, and being over. They refuse they say like this is it. This is our chance to essentially this is our opportunity to overthrow everything mm -hmm. and our opportunity to once again kind of racially motivated or or at least uh, ethnically motivated cleanse the texas land of these people um and what i think the movie does well is that you have a white family and you have their mexican uh employer employees mm -hmm. and i think any other film from a just straightforward standpoint would say this is a dumb movie and you don't need too much going on so obviously the white people are the bad people and the mexican people are the good people and that's that. Yep. And, Sign, sealed, deliver. Uh, we're done. Exactly. No more thought put into it. Just very surface level. And I'm not saying this movie's deep, but what I am saying is uh, the characters, the characterizations are certainly deeper than that. And the Mexican folks are the protagonists, but this family gets wrapped into uh, in a, in a positive way, help. They, it's more of a movie about unity. Of, of two groups of people coming together against this insurgent militia. Like yeah. there's no, you know, you think that this, this, because the, the father of this white family is, uh, I don't know that he's outright racist, but he has these, he's definitely, um, he says something in the movie about, uh, well, this is a racist thing to say, but he, he says something in the movie about like, it's not that I don't like you people. It's just that I want people to stick to their own. Well, not the father. The father was fine. Let's just clarify that the father of the family, the one who owned the place, was fine. His son, the well, like the patriarch. Yeah. Do, do, do they not have a kid? No. Nope. Oh, she was. She pregnant. was pregnant. Yeah, they have a kid That's later. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. yeah the patriarch of this family is very understanding mm -hmm. and kind of has this old school. Yeah. Uh, take on America, which is. America was built on the backs of the working class and it's a melting pot. And so he's very understanding the, the middle-aged man, the son of this, of this man, the kind of the husband, I guess it would be the best way. And here's the thing, folks, we're not going to remember the names of any of the people in these movies because they are not very memorable. Um, but the husband is the one that is just kind of uh, has it dated views on people of, of color or of people from different countries. Yep. Um, and so, but he's, it, it, they give it a, a, I think it's earned. I don't think it's this thing where they just give him a redemption story and give him a free pass on like, Oh, he used to be a shit person, but he's not anymore. He it's had like, to go through the trials, man. And it was, they really, yeah, yeah. They, they put them through the fire together to really, you know, change his worldview. That's um, excellent, and that's proof positive of excellent writing. I mean, to yeah. have him go through that, to, I mean, they could have easily been like, oh, look, he comes in and saves the day, but no, he had to, he had to like, run him off his land, and then they got into that semi-truck, and then he's helping him, you know, he could have easily said, nope, I got, I got my wife, she's, like, pregnant, you're either with us or not, we're just driving. But no, he helps him try to find his wife, and 
kind of go along and go on out this journey of discovery. So it's pretty cool. Honestly, I think it protects the movie from like political criticism in a way too, because uh, people who bitch are going to bitch. But the idea that if it was like we said, a straightforward thing where it was like, Oh, the Mexicans are just going to have to kill this white family. There would, it would be way more of a thing of conservatives being like, Oh, like this Hollywood liberal movie where this white family gets slayed or whatever. When that is in fact, not the case, the movie's way more concerned with this idea that is, uh, not politically divisive this idea that shouldn't be politically divisive of unity and people coming together and kind of hope uh you know um and it works for me uh, again this is a movie that is like not super deep but it no. works for me in several levels like the subtext of it works uh like the writing like you said is i think is good um and on top of that just as also the thing we said before like a horror action film um just a lot there's great set pieces in this there's uh some great like uh shootouts and stuff and and some tense moments i think it's all done to the thing that nobody would think the purge is which is actually quite tasteful and well made it's not just this movie it's not like blumhouse to shit out this movie or whatever because they've made four of them and people eat them up it's genuinely seems like a thoughtful movie I thought it was smarter than what I was expecting. You know, I thought it was just going to be your like run of the mill. People are getting killed. The story doesn't matter. Watch these cool effects we have. Watch these cool like traps. Watch them get killed. Blood, blood, blood. End of movie. See right. you later. But I was like, wow, this is actually kind of like it has a really good story, which I never thought I'd say oh. about a purge movie. But hey, here we are. Well, the other thing I think the movie does not do itself any favors with is like the mask and costume element of it, which can be cool. Sometimes they have good designs, but like if you watch the trailer for this, there is like two guys in like bunny rabbit costumes. And it's this thing of like I roll. Like these guys are in oh they're killers in cute costumes. I get it. It's so backwards and twisted. And it's like if anybody saw that and didn't know that this movie had any potential, they would be like, that looks dumb as hell. Uh, but it's, you know, I, I think it maybe does a disservice that way to itself. Um, but if you can look past how dumb this is, if you can look past the fact, what did Bird say? Bird, uh, we went with our, I'm sorry to put Bird on the hot seat. We went with our, our third partner. Uh, you can edit out his name if you'd like to. And he said something funny to me. He was like, he's like, I don't think of, I don't think they would ever do that. And I was like, I don't think so either. I fucking hope they don't. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I don't, this this isn't the kind of movie you walk away from going like, wow. And to think that could actually happen. Like, it's uh, far-fetched, I think. And it's it's supposed to be. Uh, but it's well done enough that you get sucked into the world of it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Such a funny take. I don't think, uh, I don't think this would ever happen. Well, yeah, probably not. You're like you're like going to see Star Wars, and you're like, um, excuse me, <laughs> um, a Death Star. You're going to Who's go Galaxy? see. You're going to go see Avatar, and you're like, mm, blue people. <laughs> I don't. Mm. I don't know about this, guys. Putting uh, <laughs> putting your tail in the animal. I don't know. You go see Friday the Thirteenth Part like twelve, and you're like, mm, wasn't he dead in the last one? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was dead. Mm, this makes no sense. Uh, yeah, you gotta go. I just, I, I, I would recommend this movie. First of all, I think we both probably would. Um, and fortunately, you don't need to see the other ones if you don't want to. You can go and cold to this one. Uh, but I'm gonna make a recommendation for the whole series. I, they're never outstanding. They're never like great, great movies. But kind of the opposite of the film we watched for At the Movies, which we talked about, uh, Room 237, we said, that's that's not a popcorn movie. Don't sit down and watch this on a Friday night. These are perfect, uh, perfectly balanced, dumb, with a little bit of satire, a little bit of commentary, and a whole lot of solid action and killing. Um, they're just well-rounded horror movies in my opinion uh and i would recommend the whole series i think each of them like i said there's kind of three different types of the purge movies and i think they all deliver on a different kind of front so whatever you're into i think they have something for you i think one thing on a promising note for these movies i mean 
you know, it's crazy because you were saying that nobody wanted to go in and watch it with you, but they had a budget of $18 million and have made $57.5 million at the box office currently. That's great. I, so, and they do, they do very well. Um, and I did notice, if I'm not mistaken, this was a Platinum Dunes feature, which is Michael Bay's production company yep. that specifically, they specifically do not like low budget, quote unquote, but lower than you then than like it's not a blockbuster budget. Yeah. They focus on churning out movies for a reasonable budget uh that they know they're gonna make money back on. Yeah, know? yeah. They um, had Platinum Dunes, Michael Bay and Brad Fuller's production company. They had Blumhouse, obviously, and uh then uh a perfect world pictures, which I have not heard about is uh it's Chinese entertainment company. Must have just been there for like the money or something. Who who knows? Not really too sure about that. But one thing of note that I'd like to point out, since I like talking about the director and cinematographer, since that's become my thing in this, is uh, I can't find anything on Ever, Ever, oh my God, I can't say his name, Ever Rado or Ever Rardo and uh, Luis Sans Sans. I butchered those names, but I haven't found anything yeah, we, about we gonna them. Get a, are we going to get a clip of that? Yeah. Oh, we only get clips of Aaron messing up. Oh, no. we only get, oh. Yeah, probably gonna edit it out. I mean, what? The, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, no, it is that is awesome. That's fascinating, uh, and it makes me excited that they, because I think that's like almost a fast track for a director. Is if you are able to do a solid entry in a franchise without, a, I mean, if you have the opportunity and you do a sturdy job, uh, I think that's a great way for you to be able to enter the industry you know yeah and it makes me excited for maybe some of the original stories that they would be able to tell after this you know um i do know there's a purge television series it might still be on i have not watched any of that so i don't know if that's good i don't know that i you know i can't recommend that um i do know that this is supposedly and of course there's always the option to make more if they make money as this has but this is slated to be the final film in the purge series uh, it says so on Wikipedia. Well, maybe they'll, they'll do fine. like, I think they might set it up maybe, and I don't know, but maybe they're going to set up one more movie because at the end of this one, they were like, the people are fighting back against the forever purgers. Maybe they'll do like an after the purge or something like that. Or yeah. like After the purge? After the movies? It's a match made in heaven. Yeah, I'm, about to, I'm about to sue. Cease and desist. <laughs> uh at once um no I, that would be cool i do as you said before and you know what uh i i know we usually talk plot more but it's not really a plot heavy movie it's very much a uh, point a to point b various stops along the way and people getting injured and things like that um but i uh, as you said at the beginning the movie has this fun twist on people having to escape America because it is a dumpster fire uh, in order to cross into Mexico to stay uh, Mexico and Canada open their borders for a certain amount of time and yep. they're trying to get over so that they can stay safe. Thank God um, everything's just completely fine here though. Now I like, I couldn't imagine living, you know, where something was bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, also to be fair though, we are in Canada because you and I were both the, the mm. kind of blue check Mark liberal types that were like, if he seriously gets elected, I'm moving to Canada. Yep. And you know what happened? He got elected, and here we are uh, talking to Boot the Forever Purge and uh, eating our Putin. Putin. Bud. Toronto. Toronto. Uh, uh, what's the Canadian anthem again? I was going to start singing it. Now I can't remember. Is it my, con my country tis of thee? No, it's O Canada. Oh. It literally starts with O, o Canada. Okay. Cut it. Cut it. It's a movie podcast. Stop. Stop. All right. All right. We're not here to preach Canadian nationalism to you folks. Let's, uh, so, uh, as I said, I would recommend The Forever Purge. Jimmy, I'm assuming you would probably do the same. You seem to have a pretty good time. Yeah. You know, historically, not a great track record with the after the movies, but. <laughs> Uh, the last two have been great. I really enjoyed this one. So this is getting a strong recommend. Oh, no, mm, I got to save those. I can't be giving those all, all willy nilly. Solid recommendation. 
Yeah, I'm going to give it a solid Sturdy. recommendation for people that are into this sort of stuff. And the other thing I was going to add uh, real quick, because I my partner does not like uh, tortury things. And by the look of the movie, if you watch the trailer, there's a part where the girl gets flipped on this cage and the, and the guys come out and they kind of trapped her. Um, you think there's going to be a lot of tortury stuff there in this franchise is not this isn't like a saw or a hostel. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a lot more action driven than horror almost like the, the horror element is kind of the, the plot itself. And then that is a way to fuel the action of people having to survive, you know, crazy people and get through the city or wherever they're at. Um, so I, I think that this is a movie that people could handle, even if they are, uh, not huge horror fans. I think it's a little more action adjacent than people would assume. Yeah, it's very it's very action heavy and uh, not as horror as I thought it was going to be. I guess is the best way. Like I don't really. I guess I have but a different. Takes place during the day. Yeah, I have a different that's, classification. That's something I always noticed. Yeah, the horror thing really didn't. I don't think it's. I mean, it's. What's the What's the thing? It's like there's like scary, and then there's there's like, like horror. Terror. terror. That's what it is. Yeah. Horror and terror. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is more. This is more the anxiety of someone chasing you than it yeah. is the horror of, oh, there's something supernatural in my house. And so it doesn't even feel, and because there's so many crazy people, it feels less like, you know, there's a serial killer on the loose or something, and more just like, I'm in this war torn area of Texas and I got to get out of here because people are running around with, you know, <laughs> assault rifles just like, shooting up you know little mom and pop shops and stuff it's it's a lot more like that it kind of feels almost like a not like an apocalypse movie but like a uh, like a dystopian you've got to survive it's a survival yeah mm -hmm. no 100 uh, percent. so as i as i understand it uh oh so okay uh our favorite character pops there um walks into the Loma Lounge, which we haven't even talked about yet. This is fucked up. We fucked up. Uh, the Loma Lounge is open, <laughs> but we're about to close. Uh, <laughs> quick, turn the light on and off. Um, Pop shows up though. He wants a, he wants an old fashioned. He wants to the no. He wants, wants some rye whiskey. No ice. And he wants to talk to us about America and his day, about all this. Urge nonsense. These capital riots. How am I going to turn this man down? That that character was so likable. Uh, he uh, rest in peace to my man. Uh, he should have he should have made it, but they had to they had to let him go. Um, but if he showed up at the Lomo Lounge, I personally think we're keeping we'll keep the bar open for an extra drink for him. Yeah, we definitely will. I I agree. Yeah. We'll sit there and listen. Um, so this is uh, an interesting week. It's it's uh, Jimmy week here yep. at the podcast at, at Lomo headquarters. We give him one week every fifty years to <laughs> talk about the movies he wants to talk about. Yep. Uh, so next week on At the Movies, we're going to be watching Manifest Destiny Down Space Time, a a uh, film from Pittsburgh, which is mm -hmm. very exciting, a local local feature. Uh, but as I understand it, and we have not talked about this previously, nope. so this is. This is a surprise to me, as much as it is the audience. You have come up with uh, two suggestions or options for next week's episode of After the Movies. I have. Um, do you want to say anything about them first, or do you just want to give them out? So uh, when I decided, I was like, I want to pick two movies that you could easily stream on Netflix. Because everybody has Netflix, pretty much, and I wanted somebody to just go, oh, they're watching this one, I'm going to watch it, or chances are it was trending, and you already watch it, so with that being said, the two... Space Jam 2. No, God, no. Uh, the two movies that I'm going to leave it up to Aaron to actually pick from these two are one that I think he might have saw, I don't know, but it seems like something he would have saw, but the first one is Gunpowder Milkshake, uh, which is like an action movie, which will seem pretty cool. Uh, it's starring, uh, it's directed by Navot Papashado and starring Karen Gillan, Lena Headey, and Carla Gugino. And it looked pretty interesting when I saw the actual um, trailer for it on Netflix. And then the second one is, uh, is an Italian film. 
um, a classic horror story, which is dubbed over in English. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> Did you see both of them? No, but do you really want to give me the choice? Because you know what I'm going to pick. Yeah. I would like to do a classic horror story, and here's why. And everyone knows that I'm a, I'm a horror guy, but we literally, we had a family party on Saturday uh, for Jess's grandpa's birthday. And he told me to watch this movie. That's cool. He watched it, and he was like, he was like, Aaron, did you see that classic horror story movie? And I was like, I saw the trailer. I haven't watched it, and he really liked it. Nice. Uh, and so this, I feel bad because I do think that Gunpowder Milkshake is, you know, uh, it worth something we should maybe cover in the future or worth talking about because well, I know people well, are excited about well, it. Here's the deal: there was a special twist in this. Is the following week we'll be watching Gunpowder Milkshake. Okay, <laughs> do that. Unless I there's something, both. unless there's something you wanted to watch. Well, no, I would like to talk about the Fear Street films but i'd like to give you i'd like to give you an opportunity to and i i believe you've watched the first one yeah uh i'd like to give you the opportunity to watch I the think, other two if you'd like to let's do let's do this and this is kind of for everybody this is cool because let's do a classic horror story for next week and then let's cover the fear street trilogy the next week Okay. Is that how you want to do it um, or do you want to do it in installments i'm happy with that because i no no i wanted to do a special that maybe be a little bit longer where we could talk about all three movies mm -hmm. um, because they weave into each other. And I don't want to, there's so much coming out to cover, you know, like if, if nothing comes out the week after and we want to talk about gunpowder milkshake, I want to keep that on the table. Yep. And uh, with that being said, since there's so much to cover, we'd like to announce another podcast called during the movies. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> during the movies is a real thing folks. And let me tell you how you can get it. If you give us $3 a month on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Lomo Media, uh, less than a cup of coffee a month, you can join our Discord, and you can watch the films with us. Uh, two watch parties a week, unless you know, there are extenuating circumstances, but typically uh, Jimmy and I will watch the films together, we'll sync up our times, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about them while we're watching them. And guess what? If you join our Discord, you can watch them with us, and you can talk about the movies with us in real time. It's a great way to connect with people during the pandemic. Um, it's a great way to support us if you like the show. And if you can't afford three bucks a month, not a problem. If you like the podcast, sharing is free. Uh, word of mouth, if you could tell a friend, that would be excellent. Um, we really appreciate everybody watching the show. Yep. Uh, I'm so glad that the movies have not just pounded Jimmy into dust these past two weeks because I was nervous that he was going to quit the show. Hopefully, hopefully we're on a new little streak and uh my classic horror story will be good hopefully hopefully so here's the real question uh, uh are you gonna watch subbed or dubbed uh i'm probably just gonna watch subbed i think that's what i'll do too i watched when the platform came out i watched it subbed because normally and... when i watch italian movies i watch them subbed not dubbed because I, I think that the the argument i hear from a lot of people is that you the emotion or the performance of the original actor yeah. if you watch it dubbed so I, I think i will do the same yeah it's up to you though everybody watching home you can either they have either or so if you just want to watch it dubbed in english hey that's okay with us too however you want to watch it you watch it however you want we're not snobs no we just covered the forever perch <laughs> <laughs> we are not we are not elitist uh this has been a ton of fun um you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. We got the Lomo season two, Lomo show season two in the works. Um, a lot of great content. I mean, uh, I use the word I hate. A lot of great stuff coming, well, <laughs> coming your way. We folks. had this, we had this conversation, and for everybody that's watching, thank you for watching. But this is us just talking now for a little bit. We had this conversation where I was like. <laughs> Where I was like, I don't know what to put in my Twitter bio. Like, I have content creator, and I was like, that is what we do, but it's so much more than that. And I'm just like, you know what, whatever. Sometimes you just have to embrace the fact that we create a lot of content, and that's just who we are. And, you know, there's more than that. Like, obviously, we want to make films, and we're filmmakers and writers and, you know, production company owners. But, hey, you know, it is what it is at this point. Hey, additionally, if everyone could follow my new Twitter handle, at Fresca Support. 
Um, I have changed my Twitter account to a Fresca fan account. This is true. This is not a bit, or else I would be saying it on shooting the bit. Uh, I have changed my Twitter handle to Fresca support. Um, my username on Twitter is Fresca US. There is no official Fresca account, which is a goddamn shame. Uh, it's a travesty, and I wanted to fill that role for them. So I will be posting Fresca memes. Uh, it is America's number one soda water. It's a very refreshing beverage. They do not sponsor the show yet, but I think I'm on to something. Um, so if you guys could just maybe go uh, support me separately as well by following Fresca support, you know, send me your Fresca memes, pictures of people drinking Frescas. Uh, I will be happy to retweet them for you. Yeah. Uh, Fresca Nation. And with um, that being said, you can also follow me on Twitter at James V Lombardo nine, because I don't want Aaron to have more Twitter followers than me. So go ahead. <laughs> kind of fucked up. If you had to, if you had to be, if you had to change your Twitter account to one product, uh, the fan account, what would it be? What would the product be? <laughs> I don't, some kind of coffee. That's the only thing I could think of that I do. That's like that every day I have a cup. There's nothing that I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Probably just coffee. Like some kind of, some kind of like coffee that has like boner pills crushed up and mixed in with the coffee blend. And then you could just like be, I would probably, I'd probably just change my name to Max Swells House. <laughs> yes, I am Mr. House. Oh, are you so looking for Max Swells? With, you're speaking directly with Max uh, Van Swells House. Van Swells. Uh, this is actually, my father's name was Maxwell. Please call me, uh, call, call me. My father's name is Mr. House. We're going to have nothing Maxwell. for shooting the bit. Let's close this damn bar down, baby. Yeah, we, yeah, we got to shut the, get the hell out, guys. Thank you for watching the show. Now get the hell out, please. Have a good one. Get out of here.